A massive fire in Bangladesh that raged through a six-story building home to restaurants where many families with children were dining has killed at least 46 people and injured dozens, the health minister said. The deaths were caused by carbon monoxide poisoning after people became stuck in an enclosed room and suffocated from the smoke, the country's health minister, Dr. Samantha Lalson, told reporters. At least 75 other people were injured, fire officials said Brigadier General Maynoudine, a top fire service official, said that the fire could have originated from a gas leak or stove. It was a dangerous building with gas cylinders on every floor, even on the staircases, he told reporters, witnesses said the shopping mall had one staircase and elevator, with no emergency exit, making escape difficult. Some people trapped inside jumped from higher floors, they said. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina expressed shock and sorrow over the incident, ordering officials to provide swift treatment for the injured. The government has set up a five-member panel to investigate the incident, deadly fires and industrial disasters, particularly in garment factories, have been a recurring problem in Bangladesh. The steady economic growth of the country of 170 million people has been a regional success story in recent years, but human rights and labor organizations have long expressed concern about poor working conditions and workplace safety measures. It became known how Ukrainian forces shoot down Russian aircraft every day, expert explains. Recently, the defenders of the Ukrainian sky have been shooting down more and more Russian Su-34 fighters and other enemy aircraft. Most likely, this became possible not because of certain types of anti-aircraft missiles, but thanks to the skill of Ukrainian air defense crews. Ivan Kirishevsky, a Ukrainian military expert of the Defense Express portal, said this on the air of Espresso. He stressed that now the question is not what exactly shot down the Russian planes, but that this was done despite the countermeasures of the enemy. Our air defense has learned to operate under constant pressure from the enemy in the frontline zone and has learned to shoot down Russian aircraft. It is unlikely that such an intensity of shooting down is associated with the arrival of certain types of anti-aircraft missiles. Rather, this is the operational skill of our anti-aircraft forces, Kirichevsky said. The fact that the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces have learned to shoot down the occupier's combat aircraft is evidenced by a number of boards lost by the enemy during the last month alone. On February the 27th, on the day of intense fighting, the soldiers managed to land two Russian Su-34 aircraft. The expert also suggested what types of weapons the Sky Defenders could use for this. It can be different variations of the Patriot. Even within the framework of the project, Franken Sam talked about different Western parts. Also, some of our bodies said that we had a Death Star called the S-200 Systems which has a declared passport range of up to 250 kilometers. We also have Italian French Samp T, which also has a fairly high range of aerodynamic targets, he said.
U.S. military warns of environmental disaster after spill in Red Sea caused by Houthi attacks. U.S. CENTCOM has warned of an environmental disaster following an attack by Yemen's Houthis on a cargo ship that caused an oil slick in the Red Sea. On the 18th of February, the Houthis targeted a UK-owned bulk carrier named Rubimar, flagged by Belize. The ship was sailing through the Bab al-Mandeb Strait, connecting the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden en route to Bulgaria from Khor Fakan in the United Arab Emirates when it was attacked by multiple missiles. The Rubimar, a Belize-flagged but British-owned bulk carrier, has been drifting in the Red Sea after it was struck by two missiles. The ship, which is feared to be in danger of sinking, is leaking an 18-mile oil spill and carrying 41,000 tons of volatile fertilizer. The 22nd of February attack on the Rubimar inflicted the most significant damage so far on a commercial ship since the Houthis started targeting vessels in November. The Houthis say their attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea are in solidarity with the stricken people of Gaza. CENTCOM posted on X that the unprovoked and reckless attack by Iran-backed Houthi terrorists caused significant damage to the ship, which caused an 18-mile oil slick. It has long been feared that the Houthis might extend their actions by disrupting internet traffic and cutting sea cables. Sixteen small fiber optic lines across the bed of the Red Sea carry about 17% of all international data traffic, including trunk lines connecting Europe with India and East Asia. It was reported on Monday that cables belonging to four big telecom networks, including the Asia-Africa Europe 1, TGN Atlantic, Europe India Gateway and the Seacom system have been damaged in recent months. The cause of the damage has not been identified and natural damage happens relatively regularly. Israeli media reports attributed the damage to Houthi actions but Yemen's Houthi-controlled communications ministry denied involvement. <music>